look at all you psychos. Uh, who uh, is at Nerd HQ for the first time? Raise your hand. All right, down. Who has never been at Nerd HQ before? Raise your hand. Some of the same people. Uh, it's my favorite joke. I use it all the time. Uh, listen, uh, these guys have a limited time, and uh, I know that you guys really want to get to the chase, so or cut to the chase. So who's ready to see this uh, panel right now? <laughs> Who wants to see this panel right now? I love it. I love it. By the way, just so you know and you feel good about yourselves, this panel alone has raised over $5,000 for Operation Smile. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. All right, without further ado... Ladies and gentlemen, psychos of all ages, please put your hands together for Dulé Hill, James Roday, Steve Franks, Kelly Kolchak, and Chris Henze. Come on. Psych, everybody. It's an open forum. Raise your hands if you want to ask a question. We'll answer anything. So who has the first question? While Not, you're waiting to ask the question, I'm going to take here a Here you go. Uh, you Wonder Woman right behind you. <laughs> Wonder Woman right back there. There you go. Hi. I was just wondering, when are we going to get to see Dooley Hill and um, James Roday tap dance together? <laughs> Well, I'm ready anytime, so that's a James Roe Day question. <laughs> How about right now? Uh, <laughs> I've got one move. I know how to finish the routine. <laughs> you can say that again. Ja James actually will be doing some, uh, some dancing. Causing car accidents with his shoes. <laughs> James, yeah. you know you're doing some dancing coming up? Uh, I do have some dancing coming up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Next episode we shoot, I think, there you go. or oh, yeah. two away. I do my own. I, it's not tap dancing though. No. But I it's do a my step own in the right direction. Yeah. And it's not dirty. It's a, no, it's more of a. It's like a ballroom thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think it's a ballroom thing. Then again, Chris, I think any kind of dance that we do is always dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? By the way, if we could have you when, you, when you get the microphone, tell us what your costume is so we can oh, know. Okay. Um, I'm Codex from the Guild. Uh, it's um, I, what can we expect out of this next season? Are we going to cry at the premiere? We're gonna cry. There's, gonna, some, there's, some there's some teary moments coming up, right? I think there's a teary moment like in the first five minutes of season seven. Yeah. What? I might be misleading you completely, though. You don't know. Getting a little sentimental in our old age. Yeah. And uh, you'll actually see some, uh, some, if you're at our panel today, you'll actually see some nice, serious, sweet, sentimental, teary-up stuff. Mm. Kind of brought the room down with that yeah, question. Yeah, uh... We need to yeah. change that. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> well, we like the lazy fans the best. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, who's next? Uh, my costume is generic nerd. Uh, <laughs> my question is with the show starting when it did and the economy the way it is now, if um, Sean's character... Um, having the background that he did with no formal education and then being successful with the skills that he had is, um, was written intentionally that way, being a message to people, hey, uh, you don't need to go to college to be successful, work with the skill set that you have <laughs> and uh, be the best that you can be with what you have. First thing Steve said to me at our very first meeting. <laughs> I want to empower people that have their own skill sets <laughs> so they don't feel like they have to go to college. Do you want to be a part of this journey? <laughs> and yes, I, I do. 
And I also said, it was weird because I said, I see a lot of bad trends in the market for next year in the global economy, and I think it's going to be a big correction in the market. <laughs> you know, it's funny, it's a good question because I always thought that the, we talked about that you had 57 jobs in the pilot, and I always thought we'd bring that back every week. You know, it was like, hey, I worked at Chick-fil-A in the, in the uh, kitchen. That's going to come back when I have to pressure cook this chicken. But uh, there was no pressure cooking of chicken. We mentioned a few of them there. We, we did. We did in the first two seasons. By the way, for you, I'm going to try to bring one back in the uh, second half and of the season. And in case season. you're wondering, he said that because James Roday did actually work at a Chick-fil-A in That's his life. That's absolutely right. That's the truth. That's a true it story. Is. And I happen to love Chick-fil-A more than anything. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. And the, the best diet lemonade anyone's ever made, by the way. It's made with Splenda. Yeah, hands. Who's next? Let me guys, you do this and then say it over there. Yep. Here comes do the it. microphone. I think we got one in the in the standing room before before here. Uh, if you don't mind, there's somebody back there who's gonna ask a question right now. You back there, yes, holding the microphone that we can't see. Go ahead. <laughs> oh wow, there it is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, you guys have had some great themes in, you know, the past few seasons, um, like the catch and tap man and um, with is there anything that you guys would like to see? Because, I mean, you've had, like, your, your 80s theme, your superhero theme. Is there anything that you guys would like to see in the future or redo because it was so much fun doing? I wouldn't mind dressing up as Michael Jackson again. <laughs> you mean on camera. <laughs> Because he does it, like, at least once a week off camera. <laughs> we could do EO if I got to play the Angelica Houston part in EO. <laughs> because I think I would kill. Beautiful? You think me beautiful? <laughs> Who saw that coming? <laughs> yeah, that's right, psychos. I can quote Captain EO. So. <laughs> and why is that, Steve? Because in, in embarrassing older jobs, I worked at Disneyland for eight and a half years. Okay, um, I'm dressed as a responsible adult. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm wondering if there's a certain sparkly piece of jewelry coming out of a Nintendo Game Boy sometime this season. Oh. That sparkly piece actually went out of the game. Out of the Game Boy. <laughs> I think it's back in. I think it's back in somebody's dresser now, isn't it? <laughs> it's t it's tough for me. Um, <laughs> I get locked out of the ether every season when we finish, and uh, <laughs> I have to wait to see what happens with this guy. <laughs> we we kind of think the longer we hold on to that sparkly piece of jewelry, the more we force the network's hands to pick us up for another year. Yes, um, my mother texted me and asked, wanted me to ask you, do you actually tap dance? Do I actually tap dance? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, I, then, then I can respond back that, that she does. Oh, I am, and I'm dressed as Chuck from, uh, it's so Chuck, by the way. Are you? Yeah. Yes, you are, sir. <laughs> no great tie. Fail. Sorry. <laughs> mini fail, mini fail. Mini Casual fail. Chuck from Chuck. <laughs> but no, yes, I am a tap dancer. Since I was three years old and I'm 37 now, so. Ah, uh, yeah. I, you know, Henry Latang, all the hoofers from Jimmy Slide, Bunny Briggs, Buster Brown, Savion Glover, Jason Samuel Smith, Donisha Sumbry, all the great ones that are past and still here. Tap talk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just gotta say, I like your shield, man. Yeah. I like your shield. That's no joke right there. That's funky. I want one. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you guys throw in lots and lots of um, cultural references, pop culture. Um, what are some of the things that you haven't included yet that you'd love to? And what are some of the, f some of the funniest things that you've included 
um, you know, wh which, which things that you've already done that you really, really like? I think we've gotten to everything. <laughs> We're gonna actually next season just start repeating ourselves, doing the same references. Yeah. I know. Did I hear like a did I hear a Cuba Gooding boat trip reference this season? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm Cuba watching Gooding dailies and I'm trip. like, really? Are we a little long in the tooth with boat trip? Uh, and scooped out some boat trip. Uh, I think I don't know if we ever I realized that would become such a huge part of uh, of our show. It just kind of sort of organically took took shape that we were nerdy enough to, to know all that stuff and finally had an outlet for it. Uh, it's been fun, though. Although we're nothing compared to Seth MacFarlane. Like, we can't touch him with yeah, a 10-foot exactly. pole. Like, we're the minor leagues of, we're the minor leagues of pop cultural references. <laughs> Pointing. Over here. Hey there. Hi, uh, I'm Allie. I'm just as a nerd herder. I love that you guys film in Canada because I'm Canadian. And I just wanted to ask you guys, like, what are the best and the worst parts about filming in Canada, other than the weather? <laughs> blends coffee. Blends, yes, the blends coffee in Vancouver. Delicious. JJ Bean. Uh, I would say, really, we didn't air in Vancouver, so really we were able to just go up there and do the work. Uh, the hardest part is being away. I mean, I miss, you know, I like being around people, I like being around my family and friends, and Vancouver is the Pacific Northwest. I'm from New Jersey, so getting out that way is kind of hard. But uh, <coughs> yeah, but actually shooting there has been uh, a wonderful experience. People are great. Our crew is really gonna miss those guys. And uh, yeah, there's, there's we've we've managed to stay somewhat anonymous over the years, and that's been helpful, I think, in terms of us getting the work done. And I was able to climb Grouse Mountain out there. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? <laughs> they have no idea what I'm yeah. talking about. No idea. <laughs> no. Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to Grouse Mountain. I took the I, I took the, the, the trolley, trolley up. up. Yeah. <laughs> but we do have the best crew out there, especially the best singing crew. I guarantee you the site crew will out sing any other crew anywhere on the planet. Right. <laughs> I'll put money on it. Which is a new show on Bravo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> crew versus. <laughs> Our crew also does this great thing that Dulé uh, started is usually when someone, when an actor raps for the show, they, uh, you'll clap them out. And we've actually taken to spontaneously having the entire crew sing happy birthday to them. Right. And, <laughs> and they always go, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and uh, it's great. And you can tell how much, how much the crew love the person by how loud they sing happy birthday. Yeah. And, and how well the harmonies come out. That's true. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering, is Gus gonna get a love interest? He is. Yes, he is. He finally did it this year, and it's the lovely Parminda Nagra. She's gonna be on. So we'll see Gus in a relationship finally. But of course she has a secret also, so she has something that she hasn't shared with Gus, and that will come out. Okay. She, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Three-hole punch. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Next question. Okay. Next question. Um, who's left on the guest star list that you haven't had yet? <coughs> Zachary Levi. What? That I don't. Is I don't think. I don't understand. Did, was that a? Was that a suggestion that Zach should come on Psych? Is that what you just said? I'll think about it. <laughs> no, actually. We've, we've talked about this, yes, yes. and I would love to be on Psych. I would love to. As some of you know, I'm, I'm gonna be working on something else until the end of the year, but after that, if I can work it out, I would love to do it. Sounds like a plan. Maybe a musical episode delay? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe a naked episode, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just wondering, during the commentaries, a lot of the stories you guys say are of Dulé going to his trailer early, <laughs> and I was, uh, <laughs> I was just wondering, like, Dulé, how long did it take you to master that craft of sneaking out and stuff? <laughs> just in general. Uh, 
I don't know how long it took me to do it. I learned it on my last show, though. I was like, I just got to say Mr. President, so maybe, maybe I just say this and position myself in a proper place that I can get out of here. <laughs> so I think I came into psych being an old pro at it. <laughs> it's called the Dulé Hill School of Acting. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hi. Julie, the middle-aged housewife. Yeah, <laughs> and a first time. You always look like you're having so much fun on screen when you're playing together and you're just riffing. How much of that is scripted and how much are you really ad-libbing? Because it looks like you're just like doing it off the top of your head. None of it is scripted. No. <laughs> uh, a lot of it is scripted. Uh, we just happen to work on a show where it sort of lends itself to improv if it feels right. But we have pretty fantastic writers that write pretty fantastic ad-lib feeling dialogue. So. So this is a question for James. You've directed, acted, and written on the show, maybe other things too. What's your favorite thing to do on the show that way, and why? Uh, well, you didn't mention fluffing. Not that that... <laughs> not, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't rank first, so I guess that's probably why you didn't. Uh, you know what, I, I've been so lucky, uh, and, it's, and these guys get a lot of the credit, that I've had the opportunity to do all that stuff. Uh, I, I, this is a lame answer, but I actually kind of love them all for different reasons. Um, I'd say directing is sort of like the brightest, shiniest new toy that I've had to play with. So uh, I've, I've been doing it for the least amount of time, and as a result, I, I get really excited about it because I feel like I have the most to learn. And, and so that's really exciting, but uh, I, I love it all, and I've got I've got the chance to do it all. So it's, you know, it's been pretty dreamy for me. A lot less time in in my trailer, but, <laughs> but but pretty dreamy. I'm here as a Comic Con volunteer, <laughs> and, and does anybody on the panel not like pineapple? Love it. Does anyone in the world not like pineapple? That was, Oh, man. Well, what's the problem, dude? <laughs> Good luck welcoming an international diplomat, man. <laughs> it's the international welcome proof. There you go. Hi. I was just wondering if there was a release date for the season six DVD yet. Uh, the release date for season six DVD. I think DVD. it's coming out, yeah. I don't know if we've officially... Terry Lynn, anybody hey, Lynn. have a release date for the season six DVD? End of the summer is what oh, we're being told. At the end of the summer, their season six DVD is coming out. Yeah. Uh, I'm director of Jericho Day's Short Man Complex. <laughs> um, nice. So I'm wondering if we'll see a double date with Dulé Hill and Jericho Day with their dates, and if I can suggest a theme, blind date, Bruce Willis. Nice. Uh, nice. Okay. All right. We'll put that in the hopper. We haven't done that yet. No. No. We haven't done a lot. Of, no, we haven't done much double dating on the show. I don't know why you're looking at me. I don't write the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll take that into consideration. Hi. Um, hi. Sorry. I'm really oh, there nervous. you are. You're under the TV. <laughs> we found you. Um, I'm not really dressed as anything, but I have a nerd necklace on. Um, <laughs> um, oh, my question is, <laughs> sorry. Um, what is your favorite Gus introduction? For all of you. For me, it was always Gus Silly Pants Jackson. <laughs> because that was the first one that Rodé did, and I didn't know it was coming. So after the take, I was like, what did you call me? <laughs> <laughs> So that one has always stayed with me. But I've, I mean, there's so many of them, it's hard to choose one. But, but if I had to, it would be that one. Nice. Yeah, I have a different answer for uh, every time I'm asked that question. So today I'll say Weepy Boy Santos. <laughs> Steve? Well, you know, I actually lost a fight in the writer's room this week for the episode we're shooting next. And there's a really funny one in there. But in the, in the previous scene, you actually said, um, if I'm in there any longer, I'm going to go into renal failure and James didn't know what renal failure was. <laughs> and then I thought it would be funny, in the, next, in the next scene he introduced you as my partner, renal failure. <laughs> and it got shot down. I mean, I need you people there. 
I'm partial to, uh, uh, this is my partner, control, alt, delete. <laughs> there it is. Kelly? Way out there. I, I do like MC clap your hands and I like jazz MC clap hands. your hands. <laughs> but it's, it's all about the face that you make after that. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You can never really go wrong with just making your face like that. <laughs> as long as you do that, you're good to go. Hi, I uh, love the show. I love all the 80s references. I was wondering if you guys ever had a thought about bringing William Zabka in as like a villain in one of the episodes. What? <laughs> William who? Zabka. Uh, he, Johnny you know from who it is. Uh, Karate Kid. <laughs> this, is, this has been going on for like the last at least two years. Funny you should mention that, man. I, Every I, time there's a guest I star. I pitch that guy like five times a season. <laughs> five times a season I pitch Zabka. For female guest stars. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we know that we should have him on our show, and we will make it happen before it's he, all he said actually, and done. He actually has come in for us recently on something that ultimately he ended up not being really right for. And, uh, and so now we know him, and we like him, and he was great in the room. And Zapka's coming up. He'll come. So my question for you, are you from San Antonio, Texas? Are you an old friend of Road Day? Did he plant you there? <laughs> <laughs> Good thinking. Hello. I actually have two really quick questions. One, Steve, did you ever get your freestyle Coke machine? And two, James, I always see that you're wearing the Titans gear. Yes. Were you actually an Oilers fan first? My husband and I have argued about James, that. James, you go first with that. I've been bleeding Oilers slash Titans blue since I was old enough to know what football was, yes. So I went with my team when they left the city. And no, I did not get my freestyle Coke machine. And I should say this to the world, it's, it's the greatest... It's the greatest advancement of the last 10 years. It's a machine that will bring 106 different flavors, whether it's Minute Maid, Minute Maid Light Cherry, Minute Maid Light uh, Fruit Punch. It's uh, got caffeine-free Diet Coke. What's your favorite one? 106 com combinations. I actually wrote it into a script that Sean had used the money to buy one, and it got hung up with them sending it into Canada. <laughs> and so... I mean, I would never be able to keep it because it's just, it's too much, it's too much upkeep. But, uh, but what is your favorite one? My favorite flavor? Uh, right now I'm partial to the Minute Maid Light Fruit Punch. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Hi, um, I'm dressed as an overworked attorney on vacation. Oh, <laughs> nice, <And laughs> nice. My question is, it was so great that we saw um, Dulé Hill's friends come back. Is there any chance that we'll see Peter and uh, Boone, come back. Peter Poon? <laughs> Boone. Oh, Peter and Boone. I'm so nervous Boone. that he's shot. But no, Peter and Boone. Peter and Boone. Oh, okay. Peter's and Boone. Maybe you were Peter's referencing the porn, the porn episode that we never made. <laughs> That's not fair. How come you know about Peter Poon and I don't? <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> oh, Peter's and, Peter's and Boone, they were fun, huh? Yeah. A lot of fun. By the way, if someone can just remind me to use him, to introduce him as his partner, Peter Poon, at some point, <laughs> I promise you, I promise you that will go here. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've actually spoken about bringing those guys back, because we, we had such a good time with them, and it was uh, such a, a privilege to be able to hang out with them, and uh, yeah, it's just about finding the right reason that makes, that makes sense. James, give us a, just give us a tuck at Floyd. What's that? Give us a tuck at Floyd. Oh, tuck it, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Build a vein, see everybody. Him throw another shoe. I need to see Carl Weathers throw another shoe at Sean. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that? That was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I just want to say on a quick side note, being from Guam, my favorite Gus nickname was the Candy Striper from Telefofo. So that was really cool for anyone from Guam. But um, also, I know how much Sean and Gus love their food, Jamba Juice in particular, and I was just wondering what your favorite things to get at Jamba Juice was. I'm a mango go-go person myself, so just curious. Favorite Jamba Juice. One of the ones with acai. <laughs> yeah, because it's a natural energy berry. <laughs> they have two. I go back and forth. Yeah. I don't really do Jamba Juice like that. <gasps> no. In Vancouver, I do blends, and I do my little peanut butter banana chocolate Ooh. smoothie thing. Yeah. Kind of like I'm a sorry to give you a disappointing yeah. answer, at, but at you Jamba, know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm the one who keeps writing in all the Jamba Juice references. 
And by the way, let me just tell you, consumer people out there, now you can do any of the Jamba Juices light. So <laughs> it, it used to be only three. It was the Strawberry Nirvana and, uh, and, the, and the Orange Appeal, which is delicious, by the way. But now you can make any of them light, and they use Splenda once again. And uh, <laughs> so please support your local Jamba Juices. Yeah. the televisions. Hello. My name's Laureen and I'm a Chuck nerd. Nice. All right. Nice, nice. We Ooh. are too. And this question is for Steve. Did you ever have an idea for a really fantastic out of this world episode that you just didn't have the budget for? That's <laughs> my life every week. <laughs> and this year, this year we're doing a lot of crazy stuff. We're, we're trying to shoot Mexico in Canada. Which, as it turns out, is very, very expensive. <laughs> and we're also doing a Cirque du Soleil episode. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Cirque du Soleil. A circus somewhat like Cirque du Soleil, but not legally binding to be exactly like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> no, they won't be on trapezes, but... Uh, They're close to trapezes. Yes. We will be on something. We do, we do Don, we do Don gear. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, we, we ridiculous are always... looking gear. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we're constantly fighting budget, and I don't know if many people know this, but uh, this season we are doing a musical episode finally. <laughs> a musical episode. We're gonna find a way for Zach to have time to come in and sing. Because we know that's what you want! <laughs> and it, it might be the greatest character that's ever been written for television in a guest spot. <laughs> Twist my arm, fine. <laughs> mm. That won't be enough. No. <laughs> but that, that, that alone, you know, it's... There, we have terrified the money people at our network already with that coming on the horizon. We're shooting at the end of the season. So you're going to find like four episodes in a row, which are the entire episode of these two guys sitting in the psych office doing nothing. No. <laughs> so when those are on, just kind of think we're building up just for this musical. Thank you, Jolie. Um, my question is two parts. One, um, James and Julie, what's your favorite pineapple placement out of any episode? And two, did you guys know that there is a company that named themselves Hidden Pineapple because of the show? No, I did not. They make a Twitter <laughs> app. My yeah, what? My Twitter app for my Windows phone is called Rowie. It's made by a company named Hidden Pineapple. Interesting. Oh, okay. <coughs> um, I think it's in a, what was the one with Mason? That episode where it was on a chalkboard. And he had the, th the Indiana Jones. That was the Indiana Sean in the temple. Yeah, those kind of crap. Steve wrestling. drew it on a chalkboard, and he had another thing that had to do with Indiana Jones on the chalkboard. Also, I thought that was pretty. It was right in the background of a shot. I thought that was pretty, pretty slick. You, did you direct that episode? That was mine. Yeah, I you did. Yeah. And and I, I came up with the idea to hide the pineapple at the last second, and uh, went back and, and wrote drew it myself. And it's uh, and and for those pure Raiders of the Lost Ark fans, there's another hidden Raiders reference on that board next to the pineapple. You're going to have to look at it, though. What, did um, Jennifer Lynch end up doing her desired signature pineapple? Did you ever hear about that? She may have done it in, in this last episode. Yeah. Well, we can't give it away, though. That's coming yeah. up. Just wondering. Just wondering. We can wondering. tell you that next year. That's in the Cirque du Soleil episode. Circus one? Oh, okay. Circus of Soul. <laughs> It's not, but it, it's in the not Cirque du Soleil episode. Yeah. What's your favorite? Uh, there's a fun one. There's another fun one coming up in our very special 100th episode. Uh, yes. Triple digits. We are now the Nolan Ryan of basic cable. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, it's in the Clue-inspired episode that we did. Uh, See? I know where it is. Yeah. It's, you, you won't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is, a lot of times they put the pineapples in places, and we are not always aware. So sometimes they're in episodes. And I yeah, have we don't no even idea. know where they were. Like, I'm watching the episode like, where the heck is this damn pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my favorite, and I wasn't asked, so I'm jumping in here. 
But my favorite one is in Sean Rescues Darth Vader. And th what we went and scouted this great mansion that we needed for this whole scene where Sean comes in in a tux and, and sneaks into this room. And as I found this beautiful mansion, we're walking through, it's the greatest location I've ever seen. And carved into the stairwell was a giant pineapple. <laughs> and like, this place is the greatest location we'll ever have. <laughs> hey there. Hi guys. I'm dressed as a groupie for Jeffster from Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> cover song by cover song, shaping the youth of the nation. Um, I'm from Santa Barbara, so I get a kick out of seeing all the shots that you guys have. But I was wondering if you guys have been to Santa Barbara, what you like or don't like about it. We don't have ostriches at our zoo, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Santa Barbara, and I love it. I like going up there when I, whenever I can. I'm a big fan of uh, Lucky's in Montecito, because that's where I first got hip to oysters. And now I'm addicted to oysters. So they will always have a good place in my heart. Yeah, I was gonna go Lucky's too because that's <laughs> that's it's kind of every it's every time I've been there that's where I've eaten. But he stole my my answer because he's a bastard. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and on a little side note, on one episode, you know, uh, the Superman that Sean and the Amazing Tap Man, they say, uh, "Where's Rob Lowe having lunch? Where's Rob Lowe having dinner?" And then I go to I go to Rodé. I say, uh, "Lucky's." That really is true. The first time I went, Rob took me there, and that's why I kind of blew up his spot a little bit. So <laughs> we're so meta, you can't even handle it. <laughs> we, to start this season, we took all the riders, we all got on a train, and we broke stories on the train to Santa Barbara, got up, and we all walked, and James came with us, and we walked around the town, because we all hadn't been there together, and we tried so hard to convince him to walk into the Santa Barbara police station <laughs> and say, I've just sensed a crime, <laughs> and he wouldn't do it. Oh, you should have did that. You should have did that and got it on video. I would have tweeted it. Santa Barbara is the murder capital of the world. They don't have time for that kind of nonsense. By the way, our police station, much nicer than the Santa Barbara police station. It's just it's creepy in there. Hi. Hello. 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 Hey. <laughs> I was just wondering uh, what the cast members do to learn the script, and what do you do if you forget? What's the second part of it? What do you do to forget? I if mean, I mean, <laughs> if, if you forget your line, what do you do? What do you do to remember your lines, and what do you well, do if you yes. forget? Yes. One, I think when we forget, it's like, you know, we just cut. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, <laughs> dag it. You know, we start all over again. I think Rodé's a freak of nature, because he can like look at stuff in two seconds and somehow learn it. I don't know how he does it. Uh, at this point, it's just, we've been doing it for so long, you kind of know what the flow is. So you look at the scenes right before you rehearse, and you read it a couple of times, and it, then it gets in there. It gets right up in there. Yeah. It's a lot easier than doing theater. You can always stop and try again. Mm -hmm. Which we do a lot. We stop a lot. Thank but God for our editors. But the amazing thing about these two guys, first of all, we, we call, in the editing room, we call Dulé the machine because he is go-to spot on almost every time. It's very rare that, that you go up on a line. And James is, is equally as amazing because you can give him a joke in, on, the, on the seventh line of a scene and he'll rattle off 300 words and put that joke in perfectly and do the rest of the scene without, I don't, I don't understand how it's possible, but uh, he, they, these guys are amazing. Hi. Hi guys, I'm sorry, my heart's beating so fast right now. Um, my question is for James. Um, my sister and I have always thought that you bear an uncanny resemblance to the, the main characters in one of my favorite video games, Nathan Drake from Uncharted. I was just wondering if um, you would ever be interested in playing a video game character like that, and what are the rest of y'all's favorite video games? Yeah, you know, um, I don't, I'm not a, a gamer like that, although I love gamers. Um, <laughs> But I, I have heard, uh, I've gotten a lot of uh, questions about this, this Nathan Drake character. Um, the question is, would I play a video game character? Uh, there's not a lot that I wouldn't play. Uh, <laughs> somebody wants to put me in a, in a Nathan Drake costume, uh, sign me up. Uh, but all my favorite video games are from when I was a kid. I was a big uh, John Elway's quarterback fan, and <laughs> Street Fighter II was, was, was big for me. The original Tron, 
Double yeah. dribble. That's where I was. Right now, I'm playing uh, this CRS, CSR racing game on, on my iPad. And then I, was I wasn't playing uh, Infinity Blade on my iPad also. And then I was doing, uh, uh, what's the Black Ops, Modern Warfare. By the way, if someone I like to race and fight, if you didn't know. <laughs> By the way, if someone is making an Uncharted movie, I would love to write that. Yes. I just want to get that out, out there somehow, because that game is so fun. I think Steve and I have burned through all those Uncharted games with, uh, with our kids. <laughs> or a lot of them, anyway. Hi. Um, I just have to say, I love the Bollywood episode you guys did a while back. So if you do one again, and you need a backup dancer, I'm available. Um, <laughs> but my question is, what's your favorite superhero and why? It's mm, a good one. Favorite superhero. Ooh, superhero. Kelly? You have a microphone. Why do you uh, want mine? Thor. Thor. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Duh. I'm gonna I go will say Lino because he says Thundercats. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to go deep. You can just pick one. Iron Man is a badass, though. I'm a big fan of Iron Man too. I have to admit. I guess, you know, it's, it's such an obvious answer, but I've always been a big fan of, uh, of Batman's backstory. You know, he's, it's, it's one of the darker superheroes, and I'm, I'm just a sick miscreant, so. <laughs> I don't know, I've always, dug, I've always dug the mythology behind Batman. <laughs> Although I also like there's, the Hulk. There's so Come much Spider-Man going on in my house right now with my kids that, you know, it's all encompassing, so yeah. we're digging on Spider-Man right now. I think I'm gonna go with Condor Man, which is, yeah, like one of the worst Disney movies and almost bankrupted the studio in the early 70s. Check it out, it's, it's, it, it's unwatchable and completely watchable at the same time. I remember Condor Man. <laughs> Hello. How did you not go to Billy Zane on that? Hello. <laughs> Rodin. Uh, I was wondering if we're ever gonna get to meet Buzz's wife. Buzz's wife, wow. And we never got to see him get married either. That's a deep pull, that's nice. You know what, I actually forgot he was married. <laughs> <laughs> I was has, like, Buzz's your, wife, what are you talking your, about? He has a Here's cat a little too. bit of psych trivia. Buzz McNabb got married on what day? Anybody? Also, Dulé Hill's May birthday. May 3rd, that's May right. May 3rd. <laughs> and we actually mentioned Buzz, Buzz's wife in the episode we're shooting Next. But we don't mention her by name because I was trying to remember what her name was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember her name? Oh. Yeah, if you Francie, like, that's it. Francie, wow. my gosh. <laughs> that's really it was, impressive. <laughs> it was Andy Berman who named, uh, who named her. Yeah, in the, in the Little Boy Cat episode. Wow. Yeah. yeah, if you like Buzz McNabb, James Roday has something for you coming up. <laughs> yeah. Special treat this season. James for Roday. All you, for all you McNabb fans out there. <laughs> James Roday has uh, made it possible for you to see more of McNabb than you'll ever want to see in your life. <laughs> more buzz than you can shake a stick at. Okay, I'm going. Hi. Hi. Hello. Right, I don't know why I'm standing up high. I'm going to sit down again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dressed as you should really buy books at my booth. Um, and... I was wondering how many blueberries you guys have actually gone through. How many what? Blueberries. Blueberries. Oh, well, we've probably destroyed three or four, like, pretty thoroughly. But I think the, the main blueberry is always the same blueberry, though. I think we, we stick with that one and we, we just stick with that we blow one up the other ones. We destroy ones. the other ones. We're going to do something spectacular with a blueberry in one of the first couple episodes this year. This person behind the television. Nope, just now me hiding under the TV. I could be way off the reservation here, but it seems that Sean's abilities, his psychic abilities, are less physical than they were in the earlier seasons. Like in Spelling Bee, he's possessed and flopping all over the ground. Are we moving away from that, or is that just my perception? You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the evolution of the show and the fact that when we first started off, I don't think any of us had any idea what Sean's psychic abilities were supposed to look like. Um, 
so we were just, it was sort of trial by fire, and uh, after about eight episodes worth of me going crazy and flopping around and acting like, I, I think we all sort of looked at each other and said, maybe it doesn't have to be this hard. Like, <laughs> maybe he doesn't have to do this every time. And then we actually started writing them, and that was helpful. And, uh, <laughs> and now it's more, uh, yeah, it's more subtle. Plus, he's getting older, man. He can't, he can't be flopping around like that anymore. Nobody wants to see that. We got time for one, maybe two more questions. One, maybe two more. Hey there. Hello. Hey. Um, I'm a rocket scientist who's a psych fan. That's what I'm dressed as. I like it. Uh, my main question is, as the show's progressed, you've gotten way creepier. Like, Gus has gotten, like, progressively creepier. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, like, what is that? What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> uh, you know, things happen out of desperation, you know. He hadn't had, you know, a love interest in a long time, and he was just getting, becoming desperate, you know. <laughs> Thing. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's just fun to play, so I enjoy doing it. I enjoy playing the creep. <laughs> we actually had a notes call once from our network, and they said, wait, Gus is trying to hit on the mental patient? <laughs> and our response was, she's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fun thing to do. It's fun to be creepy. So, <laughs> you know, and he can get away with it. He's got such a sweet face. It, like, you know, he's creepy for a minute, and then you go, oh, thank oh, you, Chris. Gus. <laughs> last question, last question. A lot of pressure. Um, I hope it's good enough. Uh, hi. Um, I was wondering if it was intentional that my two favorite side characters are named Buzz and Woody. <laughs> Buzz and Woody? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that until about four days ago. <laughs> I said, because the crystal's going, okay, so we have Buzz in this episode, we have Woody in this episode, <laughs> and I go, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was just something that I noticed, and I was like, uh, oh. We can't take credit for that one. We actually named Woody after Woody Strode, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love both of them. You should write them all the time. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of Woody this yeah. year. Yeah. They're in it a lot. Yeah. A lot of Woody. A lot. Thank you. Oh, Ladies by the way, and there gentlemen. Is there is one more question, Zach. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hey, is, are you gonna get are you gonna get Zach to be in your musical episode? What? Uh, yes, we would love that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> but you know what? You guys should give yourselves a big round of applause. You raised money for a really good yeah, cause today. You. So. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please hear it for James Dulay, Steve Kelly, and Chris. Thanks, you guys. And if you guys could please remain seated, they got to get to their cars ASAP. So just everybody hang, take pictures if you want, talk amongst yourselves, pick your nose, whatever. Pick your neighbor's nose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. What happened? You didn't see that. You didn't see that.